it's been a while, we get to say good morning. Good morning. It's so great we can be in person again, worshiping, and being able to celebrate the freedom the Lord has won for us. Glory, glory, hallelujah, his truth is marching on. So I want to welcome everyone who's uh, worshiping in person with us and also want to continue to welcome everyone who's uh, live streaming along with us. Thank you for uh, being with us this morning online and continue to be active and interactive during service, uh, even with uh, uh, everyone else here. If we're just uh, all together in this, and it's a blessing from God that we can worship in all these different <coughs> ways. So, just wanted to uh, share with everyone here just a, a couple reminders that uh, for service, obviously things are a little different. I hope everyone was able to pick up their little uh, communion uh, set this. Uh, will be able to uh, do in service a little later on and then at the end of service uh, the purple uh, tray in the back is for uh, disposing of the, the cuffs so you can place them there after uh, service is done so wanted to mention that also uh, we know many of the things uh, are different about service as far as not having the sharing of the peace and uh, the offering can will be uh, collected at the back there and you can place your offering there continue to give online uh, also just wanted to uh, mention that uh, coming up we're starting a new series next week called credo uh, looking at the apostles creed and what it means for the formation of our faith and what uh, it means for us moving forward in this world where there's a lot of <laughs> Uh, uncertainty we can profess with clarity what we believe so wanted to share that and that'll be going on all the way through September and then wanted to share so yeah today we're looking at Galatians 5 and looking at uh, the freedom that Christ has won for us and what we can do with that freedom uh, in serving in this world so that's what we're looking at the idea of what is this freedom for that we have as we uh, celebrate and hopefully we all had some good sleep last night in the midst of all the the chaos and whatnot so that's the freedom we have also wanted to uh, mention that uh, this week uh, we're taking a week off from the zoom uh, Bible study uh, we're going to be starting back up the following week on the 15th, I believe it is, looking at that credo uh, study as well. So looking through the Apostles' Creed. So it'll sort of be like going back to our confirmation days for that. Um, and then finally, I uh, wanted to mention that uh, for anyone who's watching online who's still not comfortable with meeting in person, there's still uh, communion opportunities. <laughs> Uh, and opportunities to uh, get together uh, with me for a visit on um, right now Mondays Wednesdays or Thursdays you can call ahead uh, the office ahead uh, to do that then continue to stream on Facebook or uh, when they're posted on YouTube so wanted to share that so I think that's everything I have so now we get to rise and stand and sing out to the Lord before you Lord we bow <laughs>
we bow and worship before our triune God, and we worship in the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There are times, though, that we bow before others in sin, and so we have to confess that. So we do that now as we confess, O oh God, we, we confess that we don't always understand our own actions. We, we clearly know what is right, what you expect of us, but we don't always do it. We also clearly know what is wrong, the thoughts and actions that hurt others and offend you, but we do these things anyway. We use our freedom to serve ourselves rather than you and our neighbors. Forgive us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, set us free from the sin that controls us. So now we take a few moments of silence to give over to the Lord those places where we have fallen away. Friends, hear this. Through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have been set free from the power of sin. It no longer needs to control us. So be at peace. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the triune God. Go out and live in the light of Christ. Amen. Amen. And we continue as we pray. God of freedom and grace, please give us your spirit of wisdom to understand more fully all the ways you have blessed us. Please help us to use these, those blessings to share your grace with our family and friends. May we never take for granted your gifts or abuse our freedoms won at such great cost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And you now may be seated as we have our readings for this morning. First reading is from Galatians. First reading is from Galatians 5, 1, 13 through 26. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm, then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbors as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Stand for the gospel. The gospel reading is from Matthew 11, 16 through 19, 25 through 30. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. We played the pipe for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom is proved right by his deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to the little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son. And those who to more to whom the Son chooses to reveal him came to me all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Christ. Christ. And having been set free in the Lord, we get to confess what we believe freely. And so that's what we do now as we confess the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And you now may be seated as we continue to sing out and we ask the Lord to be with all of humankind as we pray and worship. Let us now begin with the word of prayer. Oh Lord, we thank you that you do bless us, that you keep us free, that you are our source of all hope and joy. We thank you that you're a God who is with us. Whether we're here in this building or in our homes, you have set us all free, and so may we rejoice in that this morning. And Lord, I just ask that you guide the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts that it be pleasing to you and you alone, and that you would remove any temptation or distraction from us in this time together. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, let's imagine that this morning we're not in church. So if we're, we haven't been here for a while, we're going to move out again. Let's imagine that we're not in church, but are rather in a classroom. And then let's imagine that I'm not Pastor Matt, but I'm rather history teacher, Mr. Manti. And if we were to open our history books this morning, we would see that uh, if we're doing a lesson on the American Revolution, that of course 1776 was a turning point for our nation when it came to independence and freedom. Of course, on July 4th, which was yesterday, we all know in 1776 what happened. The Declaration of Independence was signed, letting the British colonizers know that we proclaimed ourselves to be free from their rule. As we fast forward a few years to 2020, we see there are plenty of discussions and plenty of arguments about independence and freedom. And I'm sure almost all of us have had a discussion about this or an argument if we're in an unfortunate heated debate about how we have felt our independence or our freedom has been limited here in 2020. I have a question for all of us, both here and watching at home. Have you had a discussion about what Christian freedom looks like in the midst of all of this? 
I say this because this morning our theme is for freedom. And we're focusing on that reading from Galatians, and we started off by, with those words that Jerry read. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. As we read this verse, as Christians, we need to ask ourselves a couple questions. What is this yoke we no longer have to bear And what has Christ set us free for? What are we to use our freedom for? And examining these questions this week, it's my prayer and my hope that they transform and impact the way we interact with the community around us and view our Christian freedom. Before I talk more about Christian freedom, though, I want to talk a little bit about independence. Yesterday, we just celebrated Independence Day. We didn't have any legal fireworks shows, although I know there was lots of uh, them still going on regardless. Uh, Hopefully, everyone still has the same amount of digits they started the day with. Um, But yesterday, we were able to celebrate the freedom and independence we have as citizens of this country and the blessings that come from it. I want to pose a question, though. As citizens of the kingdom of God, are we independent? And as I wrestled with this question to answer it, I think I would say to mean to be a Christian means we are not independent. I say this because at its heart, Christianity is about acknowledging we need help. We need a Savior to depend on. And we as a community of faith, both in this room and in our homes, as the community of faith, need to walk with one another through this journey of life. And so we see we are interdependent as Christians. And maybe in the church sometime we should celebrate an interdependence day where we celebrate how we uh, depend on our triune God for everything we have and are. And we can celebrate the interdependence of this community of faith and how we care for the whole body and support one another. Now, this doesn't mean that we can't be patriotic or support our country, but sometimes as uh, Americans, we have this uh, streak of being cavalier, and sometimes uh, we, ru- we have a rugged independence we foster. Maybe we need to rein that in, because that can work great in an action movie where a lone hero goes out and saves the day, but as Christians, we cannot stand alone. First off, we depend on the Father. We depend on the Father who has given us this creation to steward. We depend on our Savior, Jesus Christ, to live inside us because we have been crucified with him. So we no longer live but depend on his life. And we depend on the Holy Spirit to give us gifts that we can share with our dependent community. So if we're not independent, then what does it mean, what does it look like to be truly free then? Well, the quest for freedom has gone on a lot longer than from 1776 forward. In fact, it's found in the Bible, going all the way back to Genesis 3. Adam and Eve, they wanted independence. They wanted freedom from God, and the results are disastrous. Their rebellion caused not only them to be separated from God, but put a yoke of sin on every person since then. And what happens every time we try to take that yoke off ourselves with our independent strength? That yoke just keeps coming back on to us. It keeps its lock on us. So as we read in the beginning of this message, we have to have one who frees us. One we depend on. And that is Jesus Christ. 
He frees us and, as Jerry read in the gospel lesson, gives us a yoke, a burden that is light. He gives us a reason to rejoice. And what is it then, as Christians, we can use this freedom for? Well, Peter puts it this way in 1 Peter 2.16. You are free, but you are still God's servants. And you must not use your freedom as an excuse for doing wrong. So first we see that we use our freedom to serve the Lord, to serve our God. And we don't use our Christian freedom as an excuse to do anything against the law of God. We glorify him, that's right, in that freedom. And then Paul says this in Galatians 5, 13 through 14. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. So we see this freedom is also for loving our neighbors, for loving people out in our community. We are free so we can serve, putting others in our community ahead of our own needs. In other words, Paul is saying freedom is not simply a gift we are given, but it's a responsibility placed in our hands. And it's mutual love. Mutual love that keeps this yoke and this freedom in check. And so the question isn't really, are you free or how free are you? For Paul, the question is, what are you going to do with your freedom? There's a choice to be made. What will you choose? In fact, it looks like a math equation. And I put the second one on there that we're called to do, but the first one is a wrong way. Freedom minus love equals license, equals slavery to sin, in other words. But the equation we are called to live out is freedom plus love equals service to others. Now I've gone from being a history teacher to a math teacher. If we think about the gifts of the Spirit, this means we're called to use them interdependently so that the whole community is built up with love, not just ourselves. Because if we make it about ourselves, what is the result? Well, Paul goes on and answers that as he says in verse 15, if you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. I don't know about you, but it feels like a lot of this is going on in the world right now. A lot of biting, a lot of devouring. If this keeps on going on, we'll be destroyed by one another, regardless of what side we're on. And it's easy to want to use our freedom of speech instead of speaking the truth in love to attack one another. We want to use our other freedoms as well, not to love and serve our neighbor, but to serve ourselves and attack our neighbor. And what is it that a self-centered life in that way leads to? Well, Paul points this out in that big list in verses 19 through 21 that Jerry read. And some of those things are fornication, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. Man, it's, it's tough. That's quite a list, isn't it? And if you take a second look at that list, what you see is the inevitable selfishness behind each one of those words. They're about pleasing self at the expense of others. All of those are words that divide or abuse or they take. And this is what Paul means about pleasures of the flesh. Those actions and behaviors are ones that push people away from each other. They're all words of individualism. It's all about me. But then we can see a contrast. We can see hope as Paul does not end there but gives us a second list. 
And we see that this is a list about joining together, about community, about building up with Christian freedom. Words like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are words about interdependence and caring for each other, building up the community of faith and the wider world. This is a way of living full of joy, full with the love of Christ for all people. These are loving actions shared in freedom. These are joys experienced in the community. And now if we go back through history, we see interesting quotes uh, from church fathers as well regarding Christian freedom. And St. Augustine once said, Love God and do whatever you please. Now that sounds like a, a risky proposition, doesn't it? To, to tell someone, love God and do whatever you please. But there's a qualifier here. That first phrase directs all of our actions. Because if we love God, what's going to happen with all our other actions? They're going to please God. There's no need for the law since every motivation will please the one you love. And he points this out in the second half of the quote that's on the screen as he went on and says beyond that, For the soul trained in love to God will do nothing to offend the one who is beloved. Amen. And Paul sums this up after that second list of fruitful living as he says, against such things there is no law, basically giving the same point. Paul's argument is that if you love yourself the most, then you will do what pleases you regardless of how it affects everyone else. But if you love God the most, then you will be able to do what pleases God, which includes loving our neighbor. And this freedom is best exhibited by our Savior, Jesus Christ. As because he was God and was without sin, there was no law against him. And yet he loved humanity so much that he took the full burden of the law and gave his life so we might have eternal life. We live in this sacrificial freedom of Christ to be people of sacrifice and share this eternal life with others. And Martin Luther, uh, another church father, compared the freedom we have in Christ to all other freedoms in this way. This is that great and priceless liberty. If we compare its magnitude and majesty with all the rest, political freedom and freedom of the flesh, they are but a drop of water in the endless sea for having such confidence within the heart who can adequately describe how wonderful it is that they are not nor will ever be the objects of God's wrath. Instead, because of Christ, God will be a merciful and loving Father toward them. This is indeed a marvelous and incomprehensible freedom that the most exalted and sovereign majesty would show us such favor. In this life, God not only defends, sustains, and comes to our rescue, but also with respect to our body sown in corruption, dishonor, and illness, will set it free. Will set it free, re resurrecting it incorruptible in power and in glory. This, therefore, this is a priceless freedom that we are forever freed from God's wrath. It's a freedom that surpasses heaven and earth and all creatures. Amen. Christ has set us free indeed. And this is the freedom that Paul is excited for us to live in. And this is why we live for freedom, not just on this 4th of July weekend, but every day the Lord has made. It's the freedom to go forth and care for and love our neighbors. 
It's the freedom to see all people as equals in the sight of the law and in the eyes of God, regardless of their background. It's the freedom not to serve, not because you have to, but because you are filled with the grace of God to go and love, because you have love to put into action. We are not free to live independently of one another, caring only for ourselves. Instead, we are free to acknowledge our interdependence on our Lord and one another. Then we can go forth and share how this freedom is for us, whether it's 1776, 2020, or eternally. This is the freedom of our greatest teacher, not Mr. Manti, but our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank him for our freedom this day. And let us pray. Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice that covers my sin. I ask that I would serve you and others over myself because it is what you have asked of me. When I start to live selfishly, direct my heart towards yours so that I can live more like you. Would you always bring me back to you so that I can become more like you? Amen. Well, at this time, I want to uh, remind everyone online that you can continue through uh, everything going on to continue to give tithes and offerings, uh, both online at give to RLC at resurrection-lcms.org, or continue to mail them in. We'll be checking the mail. And for everyone here, we're uh, placing them in the back after service. I know some of you did it beforehand. And so instead of an offering, we're just going to take some time to uh, listen uh, meditatively and uh, to some music that Karen's prepared and just reflect on the message we've just heard. Uh, take time to lift our prayers to the Lord so we rise and stand to do that and for everyone watching online if you want uh, during this time of prayer to be typing out a prayer that we can uh, pray over uh, after service and at second service you can do that now 
And so let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. And Lord, we praise you for setting us free, allowing us to have true freedom in you. May the fruit of the Spirit freely go, grow inside of us so we might serve others all around us, no matter their backgrounds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we thank you for the gift of worship, being able to regather and worship you this morning. Thank you for all our brothers and sisters in Christ who are here and also those who are still at home worshiping. May we all hold hands with one another. May we also bear with one another in love and patience through all the changes we are working through. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we thank you for the blessings we have because of our freedom as a nation. May everyone in our nation use their freedoms in, a way, in ways that reflect the fruit of the Spirit. And may all people see you as the author of true freedom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we continue to thank you for those who are working long, hard hours at essential businesses across the nation, such as our medical professionals and grocery store workers. Give them your strength and let us show appreciation and thanks for them by shining your love out to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we give thanks for all those who protect and defend our freedoms. We ask that you would keep them safe and that all who serve publicly would seek your wisdom and counsel on the best ways to fulfill their vocations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for all those who continue to be impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic with numbers rising. We pray that your light would shine on all, the, all those grieving the loss of loved ones because of it that you would bring healing to those who are ill, and that you would bring a total cure to this disease. Continue to give doctors and government officials guidance on the best ways to work through this with your healing power overseeing it all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for our fractured nation that there would be unity. We pray that everyone would be peaceful and that bridges would be built instead of destroyed in our community. We also pray, Lord Jesus, that your eyes of compassion would fall upon everyone hurting and that your healing would transform our nation. Furthermore, we pray that your peace would quell the violence and that your power of love would eradicate the evils of hatred and racism in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we come to you, and we are people who grieve and mourn with those who mourn. And Lord, we're mourning right now the loss of our dear sister in Christ, our fellow church member, Shirley Hogue. Lord, we ask that you bring comfort and care to her whole family, and may we continue to hold hands with them and Lord, we thank you that they are comforted by the hope of your resurrection, that in a twinkling of the eye, you have changed Shirley and clothed her with the imperishable, that she now has victory forever in you, Lord Jesus. May we continue to be sustained and may her whole family be sustained in this resurrection hope in this time of mourning and loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we lift up all those who are in our midst who are ill and in need of healing. Bring your strength, good health, and uplifting healing spirit into their lives. And may we continue to hold hands with them in creative ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we just continue to pray for all those who are afflicted by poverty, war, and injustice that you would bring your justice, care, and peace to all those who are suffering. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, we pray that your guidance and safety would be with us as we continue to regather and worship next week. Temper all our expectations that we may focus solely on you in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And at this time, lift up any of the prayers or praises on your hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that as we are, are involved in this uh, civil rights fight we did in the 60s, 70s, and ongoing, give us understanding of other races, more compassion, especially is that one last glaring holdout of uh, the police and minorities and how they're treated. It's got to stop, Lord. We thank you for the videos that are made available so that more of us can really see now, truly understand what uh, especially black and brown people have been telling us for years. Let us understand and let us wipe out this uh, killing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we place all these prayers spoken and unspoken into your hands. We commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And now as his people, we are bold to pray as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now we do come to the time of communion. And uh, just to remind everyone who has the, uh, the more hourglass-shaped one with the wine, make sure you open the host first because it's hard to do it the opposite way if you open the wine first. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to mention that as we do this. So I'll say the words of institution, uh, and then at the end I'll say take and eat, this is the body, and then say take and drink, and we'll uh, do that in our seats here. Um, obviously we'll take our mask down for that, and then after we're done, We'll put our mask back on to finish the service. And uh, as we're dismissed at the end of service here, uh, the purple tray, like I mentioned, is where we'll place these after we're done. So our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And in we thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. So take and eat the body of Christ, which is given for you. And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. So take and drink the blood of Christ, which is shed for you. And now hand received the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Go strengthen this day to life everlasting in the one true faith, departing in his peace, his joy, and his freedom to go forth and serve others. Amen. I want to thank everyone. I'm so blessed that we're able to meet back together. What a beautiful thing it is 
Um, just continue to pray safety over everyone and God's blessings and also for everyone still watching online. We're so glad that you can continue to join in this way and just ask that you continue to be blessed in the Lord as well. And so we go forth with this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. And now let us sing out together, Christ by heavenly hosts adored.